ஜம்மூடம் a lot was said some clarifications were also made because rumors were circling about shaheen shah afridi not playing the first two matches of the series being arrested but uh, he clarified that there is no uh, fitness issue in fact shaheen uh, is amongst the fittest of players and he would be participating as well so i think a lot of things have been discussed and we'll talk about the combination of both teams as well when it comes to uh t20 cricket particularly new zealand are carrying strength which they would like to try as well and uh, 7:30 pm tomorrow uh, we talk about uh, this match that begins babar azam is returning as captain mohammad amir returning as well imad wasim making a return to the national side uh, usman khan uh, is expected to be given a debut as well so a lot needs to be discussed as well then we move on to pakistan women series against the west indies this is also at home as well 3-1 internationals and 5 t20 internationals are part of the series as well players have commenced their training and of course the one day series trophy has also been unveiled as well this is also part of the icc uh, women's odi championship so we'll talk about that as well then we move on to the uefa champions league which had an exciting night once again uh, and i think the first semi final lineup has been completed so we'll talk about that as well uh, it was uh, intense encounters i mean uh, for barcelona to be troubled like that is something that people would not have fancied they wanted a, you know a proper com- competitive game but that probably didn't happen but we'll talk about the games themselves as well where psg have beaten barcelona the score was 4-1 6-4 on aggregate borussia dortmund beat atletico madrid 4-2 their aggregate was 5-4 so psg face uh, uh, Atle- borussia dortmund in the first semi final we talk about arsenal uh, they are in the run and in contention uh, tonight as well they face bayern in the second leg arsenal uh, of course had a practice session in london as well the first leg was tied to all and of course uh, uh, this match uh, i think is going to be very very interesting and we've got uh, manchester city as well i think that is the big game that everybody is looking forward to because them against real madrid was a thriller uh, on the eve of uh, eid ul fitr but right now i think it's going to be even more intense it's all to play for now because these are the second legs but of course city at home are going to be uh, i think very very clinical it will be very very interesting as well so we'll talk about that time now to introduce our guest for our first segment that is of course cricket in studios we've been joined by a senior cricket commentator he's a broadcaster presenter he's our sports expert as well a very known personality uh, in the world of cricket mr k asif ahmed assalam alaikum how are you sir wa alaikum assalam ahmed and thank you very much for your compliments great sir. to have you on the show we've also been joined by sports expert mr malik usman assalam alaikum sir how are you Well. Great to have you on the show as well. And also joining us is sports expert and analyst, a regular part of our programs, Mr. Sabir Hussain. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, sir? Wa alaikum assalam. Ahmed, I am perfectly fine. Thank you. Great to have you on the show as well, Sabir. Uh, like I said, uh, that cricket is going to be the first argument. Now, of course, uh, Asif, thankfully, uh, I think the weather has cleared a bit. But then again, you've got to look at the predictions as well. It's going to be very, very tricky uh, for these matches in Rawalpindi. Hopefully, we're hoping for complete games. but it all starts tomorrow as well now the head coach azhar mahmood also made a couple of clarifications a lot of questions were posed to him uh, but so far i think what we can gauge is that uh, they're very sure of what kind of planning and execution they want to go with mm. well i don't think so they are sure uh, cuz uh, still the things are confused i'm um, i'm not sure that what will uh, would be the squad of pakistan as you said that the playing 11 is this and uh, we have shared the statement of shaheen shah afridi for me once again i'm asking the question the same question which i was raising from last couple of days that what would be the playing 11 for pakistan either uh, 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 fakhar zaman as uh, uh, usman bhai shared couple of you know inner stories last night that uh, Uh, Saima Yub and Fakhar Zaman they will be opening but once again the question then what would be the number of Rizwan because I'm quite sure that uh, in the bilateral series against uh, New Zealand in New Zealand he wasn't ready to play on number 3 number 4 and that's why he was pretty much stick towards the opening position then I think there will be unrest or chaos in the uh, uh, in the dugout in the dressing room how babar azam will convince to rizwan that you come on number 4 if he's coming on number 4 see that he is not the player who come and improvise he takes time he 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 doesn't play you know all the time cross the line but uh, and he doesn't smash all the way uh, uh, he is a player who who used to to come up with 10 15 runs with the singles twos and then he 
accelerate his innings. So there's a, there are the questions. So I don't know why Azhar Mahmood is pretty much clear about this situation. Mm -hmm. And then we'll ask the uh, bowling combination that uh, we have Usama, we have Shadab Khan, who will be playing. Uh, and uh, what about Imad Wasim? So we have three, four options in, options in the... Uh, uh, and, and, and then, of course, middle order. Iftikhar and Azam Khan and Rizwan, Usman Khan, Irfan Khan, Niazi. Plenty of questions. Certainly. Uh, Usman, you made a very, uh, I think, uh, pertinent comment uh, in the past two shows that we've had. You highlighted that Pakistan, uh, more or less, should be going with a final combination of full strength side that they're aiming to develop uh, in time for the World Cup. And like I said, that by what I gauged from Azhar Mahmood or what you told us with your sources and my sources is that they're very sure of uh, what kind of planning and execution they want to go with in this series as well. Uh, the, I, I agree with KSF also that, uh, uh, but one thing which I would like to politely disagree with him is, mm -hmm. see, once you have so many options, that is a good <laughs> headache to have, isn't it? <laughs> when you have two, three spin options, you have a couple of good middle order options, I think that's a good bet. But I agree about Muhammad Rizwan, I, I completely agree with him because he's, he's not a block basher kind of a player, he, he's a naja and he doesn't have too many shots to play and he is not someone who is a brisk starter as well. <laughs> Coming to your question, what Pakistan I are planning to do, looking at what Azhar Mahmood was talking about and we were talking about was they wanted to be too much flexible. Having 12 games to go before the World Cup, how much flexible can you be? And what kind of performance and what is the criteria that if a performance, uh, if, if a player like Usman Khan, for example, for the sake of discussion, scores a 100 and then flops in the next three games, so where is he falling? Will he be in the squad or not? I think there is a lot of uncertainty as well. That was one of the reasons why I wanted that you need to have a certain message passed on to the team and they should be knowing that what their role is going to be and how they're going to progress into this World Cup and what they're going to do in this World Cup as well. Sometimes uh, a, a trick or two does come up and it can benefit you but uh, I think the best way to go forward is always to have a strong base and for that you need to have a strong planning as well. And what uh, Pakistanis are trying to do is once uh, one thing we discussed last time was having Saim and Fakhar as opener, suddenly Fakhar is being talked about as opener from one down, two down and Babar is being pinched at th pitched at three, then Rizwan certainly at four and then Usman and then Iftikhar. I think if uh, they may try this for a couple of games, but what about the rest of the games? And why are they being shuffled, whether they are not performing well or they are being tried on in a new position? There are a lot of queries, a lot of questions, a lot of confusion going on this, uh, in this Pakistan side, which they think is their flexibility. But for people like us, we think there is a lot of confusion in this team. Well, uh, certainly. I think uh, across the board, we've discussed that in the past year or more, more than a year now, there, there's been a lot of uncertainty. So for anybody, I think that is involved with Pakistan cricket, be it part of the team management, the players, <coughs> or uh, even experts, you know, for us who are part of uh, the broadcast fraternity as well as presenters, uh, it's very hard to have that faith once again in a system. Although we want to have it, but obviously insecurities are certainly there with what we've seen in the past two years. And all of us, I think across the board, one thing is for sure, that for time and time again from this platform, even when the rumours were there that uh, Mohsin Naqvi would be nominated for chairman PCB, we've highlighted that on the administrative side, we trust his capabilities and we're hopeful that a new era of stability is going to return to PCB, which we've not seen in the past five years. So we were sure of that. Uh, Sabit, the team combinations like Asim and Usman have mentioned that you've got plenty of options now. There are also talks about uh, the batting order changing, not uh, slight, but immensely, uh, which gives uh, you know impetus to a new debate as well of how you're going to be fitting in players across formats. Look, I mean, you know, uh, uh, 18, 17 players basically, you know, they have been selected for this particular series, but I mean, there are, you know, 14 to 15 players. I mean, they are basically going to play all the five T20s. I feel sorry for Irfan Khan Niazi and also Osama Amir as well. You know, uh, come back, obviously, I mean, Imad Wasim will be playing along with Shadab Khan. Uh, th this is in my opinion. Mm. You, you know, Babar Azam, basically, he, you know, would like to win this particular series, you know, on a high note. And uh, yes, there will be, you know, a couple of, uh, uh, tryout combinations as far as you know open, uh, one, one down position is maybe number four position is concerned because Usman Khan should be given a chance because mm -hmm. a, a person like him who's having a you know a current form he, he must be given a chance I mean because he is carrying a wonderful form you know in this particular PSL a mar marvelous century you know a couple of 50s as well and on a winning winning cause so this is a guy basically who performed at number one position and number 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 four as well so Muhammad Rizwan and Shaheen Shafridi I would like to see both of them you know, uh, must be uh, resting in two to three twenties because these both of them basically are the integral part of this is you know this particular T20 side. I mean, uh, you have a luxury of uh, Muhammad Amir, 
experienced kind of Mohammad Amir because he has been, you know, uh, coming back from retirement. I mean, yes, he will be, you know, uh, playing more matches because obviously Babar Azam basically, he, this is the time he basically needs to build up a team for the World Cup. And this is the particular time again against New Zealand. Lots of people are criticizing, you know, New Zealand. They are basically sending B-side B, B team, team or T-C-side team. On Monday, basically, Malik Usman, he rightly said, I mean, we are basically not worried about which kind of team they have sent. I mean, we must mm. focus on our team, basically. We are preparing for World Cup. They are, they are basically experienced players, likes us or likes of, you know, uh, Mitchell Santa, Ken Williamson, Mitchell, you know, uh, uh, a couple of more players, Ferguson mm. as well, they are playing IPL. So it's basically their headache. We must focus on our cricket. We have a couple of options. It's good for us, I mean, basically. India basically have, you know, Ishan Kishan and Surya Kumar Yadav, KL Rahul, similar kind of players in, in one squad. So, I mean, they basically manage properly. So, this is the time for Pakistan, basically. They, they, they need to manage Maaz Wasim, Shadab Khan properly, along with Osama Mir in this particular series. Then, Mohammed, uh, Us Usman Khan and Mohammed Rizwan should be given the chance in the middle order. Well, uh, Asif, I'm sure you, you're <coughs> definitely going to add to that as well. Uh, first of all, we all agree that uh, Sabri Jotai looks absolutely fantastic. Mm. Let's oh, wow. I, I was just, you know, while he was talking, I was gazing there. So, 10 points to you on that one. If you ever have a challenge for the best ties over here as well. Uh, uh, but Asif, I, th I think uh, out of what Sabir said, the most important uh, factor or the most important argument is that for quite some time now, we've not seen Mohammad Rizwan being rested in T20 cricket. We've had the luxury of Haseebullah, we've had the luxury of Azam Khan, uh, Mohammad Haris is a very, very disappointing case that he's been rested again. But if you want to develop a future wicketkeeper or even an additional wicketkeeper in the squad, the best way to do it is probably or develop an opener is, you know, for one or two games, it should be very common to rest Mohammad Rizwan. There shouldn't be any insecurities. Mm. Well, I think there's a problem that mm -hmm. uh, the uh, when we talk about the, the senior players, they're not giving chances. Uh, let's start uh, from the uh, after the World Cup. What happened at the when we guys started criticizing on Babar Azam, and everyone said that the, we don't want him as a skipper. Uh, yes, uh, we 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 are sure we we are we're quite sure that uh, you know, we are okay and we are quite satisfied his skills with the bat. When but when we talk about the, the his uh, captaincy skills, yes, there are question marks. So I think that the insecurities comes from the skipper and not only from the Rizwan or the some other team players, but everyone is insecure about his. If Babar Azam is not uh, sure about his place in the Pakistan team, then what about the rest of the players? And of course, that uh, the question which you're raising about the <laughs> Rizwan, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that why Rizwan is not saying to PCB, well, fine, I'm taking rest, give chance to any other player as uh, my uh, colleague Sabir has mentioned a couple of names in India that what's going on. They've given, mm. uh, you know, chances to new uh, so many players, even as skipper, even as an opener batter, even the some of the uh, fast bowlers, some of the spinners, some of the wicket keepers. They have plenty of options. We have plenty of options, but they're sitting just on the bench and they're watching their seniors. They're performing well. I think that's the problem, and I'm quite sure, and I'm, I'm I strongly agree with you with your point of view that this is the best time that Rizwan should tell to team. Well, fine, I'll, I'll be sitting on the bench and watching the, to the geni uh, juniors and taking rest that now this is their time. Give them uh, an opportunity. If you see the New Zealand side, we haven't discussed their squad, though we have named them, but see if you go into the details, you will not find the senior players mm -hmm. they're coming and they're just giving chances to the players who have performed so well in their domestic circuit. I think we're not following the, those traits. Uh, Usman, this is a very pertinent argument for uh, as far as the wicketkeeper batters are concerned in Pakistan because we were not ready to uh, give a rest and I'll I won't say bench but give a rest to Mohammad Rizwan even in the previous series that uh, I think eventually caused uh, big damage to Saib Zada Farhan who was trying to make a comeback in the side as an opener but he was unfortunately forced to play at number 4 and 5 which was not his natural position and you know there goes the comeback. Uh, once again we see that Guys like Usman, Saim, even Mohammad Haris, who's not in the side right now. Uh, if they're genuine openers and you want to try them, then you've got to be brave enough uh, to bench Mohammad Rizwan. And I think even Rizwan should understand the situation as well. Because like I said in the past, if I look at the T20s of Pakistan, uh, we've not uh, had Mohammad Rizwan resting for games. See, uh, once our former captain said that Pakistani team is selected by the media, not by the selectors. <laughs> and that really goes well uh, to his saying, look what happened after the 50 over World Cup was, they wanted to rest Rizwan and Babar both for the T20s and <coughs> look how the euphoria arised in this uh, media. And suddenly both of them were opening the innings. Uh, Babar was coming at one down, Rizwan was opening. 
and there was just a change of one position and yet Rizwan had a lot of questions in the press conference regarding the breaking up of the opening slot. I think Rizwan feels far more insecure than Babar Azam. And uh, I was uh, someone who used to always talk on the show that why everybody is talking about shuffling Babar Azam and why not Muhammad Rizwan. Everybody is asking him to uh, change his position and Rizwan to be as opener, whereas uh, Babar has a brisk strike rate than Rizwan. But now suddenly Rizwan is in a hole because Babar has become the captain. If anybody will have to shuffle, it would be either Rizwan or both of them. Mm -hmm. And as uh, uh, even last night we were uh, we were listening to some of the rumors that probably uh, Saim and Babar may open in the first uh, first T20. Again, Rizwan is out of the equation. And uh, yesterday we were talking about the opening combination. Again, Rizwan was not in, uh, featuring in that. If Rizwan comes at four, five, or six, I think. Uh, uh, he would not be materialized as he, as he is as an opener. I think he does not have a game for T20 in the middle of us. That is my opinion. In one day and test are totally different thing. I think he's not good at T20. But another point that we discussed batsman. after the show yesterday mm. as well amongst us uh, candidly was that Babar probably has been uh, you know mm. brought by, back as captain and given uh, you know a guideline to yes. to stay at number three. Yes. If he does stay at number three, let's just mm. take a hypothetical scenario that Babar is going to bat at number three even in the World Cup. Mm. Then, in your personal opinion, uh, Saim is there. Who's the other candidate? Would you have Fakhar or Rizwan? Uh, see, I, I, I'm sticking with Fakhar Zaman because mm. that is what my sources told me that they want to check this combination out. See, if you are having Saim and Rizwan. It is as good as having Babar and Rizwan. If Saim gets out early, it's as good as the opening combination which we were having previously. Why not utilize the first six overs? See what is happening in other leagues of the world. You have seen 270, 280 mm -hmm. are being scored and the, the chasing team is scoring 262. So this is how the world is going to pan out in most of the on the pitches. Some pitches are slow in uh, West Indies, but some are totally batting paradise. See, if you can go for horses for courses, but I don't think Pakistanis are too good and too brave enough to do that. So they will have a rigid batting lineup and once they get the combination going, that is how it is going to be. If that is the case, <coughs> why not have uh, Fakhar and Saim to use the first six overs? If it goes well, great. If it doesn't, then you have Babar and Co to take over. Right, so I think we're, we've explored many things about Pakistan's combinations that we're talking about and I think a lot rests on uh, what the captain thinks as well because for the very first time uh, in the constitution or structure right now, it's been mentioned that the captain is part of that selection panel. Before that, obviously, the captain had an influence. But now I think it's become very, very pertinent as well. And I do believe that uh, as far as the case of Imad Wasim and Mohammad Amir are concerned, I think that would be handled uh, in a very, very uh, dignified manner by PCB and Babar Azam as well. And even I, I'll be very honest, Sabir, I would like you to comment on this, that uh, I think uh, the time Babar Azam has been away from a captaincy from the Pakistan team, I think now, once we see him uh, tomorrow uh, as a skipper again, uh, we're going to see probably uh, you know, a new Babar Azam as a skipper. I, I think many things are going to change as far as his mindset is concerned as well. Look, I mean, Ahmad, I'm, I'm quite optimi optimistic, I mean, you know, Babar Azam, because he is he's having a such kind of experience, you know, because he has been the captain of Pakistan in test matches and ODIs and also in, t in, in T20s as well. So, I mean, uh, under, his, under his captaincy, basically, we have achieved, you know, a couple of... Uh, uh, good, good. I think uh, positive moves. I, I, I believe in, in 2021 because we basically, you know, uh, qualified for the semi-final, lost against, you know, against Australia in semi-final, and then basically qualifying, you know, in Australia and in 2022, uh, you know. So when there are a couple of positives as far as his captaincy is concerned. Uh, but I mean, I would like to see, you know, uh, uh, his basically captaincy moves during the field. Basically, he has, he he used to make a couple of mistakes, small minor mistakes, you know, not putting up a slip uh, when you have a left arm, you know, spin up Mohammad Nawaz. Used to have we, we basically, you know, missed an Asia Cup final as well against Sri Lanka. So there are, you know, a couple of mistakes basically used to make. The now curious case of Mohammad Dawaz Savir is probably <laughs> no longer there anymore. Mm. Yes, but, but, but for Shadab Khan, you know, yes. in crucial moments basically. So this this br brings out, you know, best of, out of your captaincy. MS Dhoni, we always talk about, you know, MS Dhoni, you know, Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, these kind of captains, you know, Ricky Pointing used to have, Steve Waugh, Vasi Vakram as well. So they basically, they were they were basically attacking captains, I mean. Uh, I would like to, you know, mention a couple of things for uh, Azam Khan. If he has been selected, you know, there, is, there has been lots of criticism because he has been not given been a couple of, you know, consistent chances. Because he has performed exceptionally well in CPL and along with Saim Ayub as well. Saim Ayub basically has, has played, I think, one season. But ba uh, Azam Khan, he has basically played a couple of seasons. So I think he must be playing all five, uh, five T20s in, in against New Zealand. And he must be the finisher 
you know, uh, if you are talking about Iftikhar Ahmed, he has been given mo uh, lots of chances. If you are looking for World Cup on these kind of pitches, a uh, finisher role, Azam Khan would be given a proper chance in num at number five. Would you, would you bank on him if you were to uh, select either one of Iftikhar and Azam? Who would be your choice? Because let's be honest, we saw a very good 80 or 85 from Azam uh, in the Islamabad United game as well. But unfortunately, I didn't see him finishing any game in the Pakistan mm. Super League. <laughs> Look, I mean, he has been, you know, uh, performing exceptionally well. Mm. And he has been, you know, uh, finishing a couple of games for, for Islamabad United. And also, you know, uh, in, in CPL as well, in Caribbean Premier League. So he is having uh, such kind of experience. But for, for Iftikhar Ahmad, while, while Imad Wasim is coming back, Shadab Khan is coming back, you know, you have Saim Ayub as well. So I think you, basically, Babar Azam doesn't need Iftikhar Ahmad as a fourth mm. off spinner. In your, in, your, in your bowling lineup. So better to utilize uh, Azam Khan as a wicket keeper best spin mm -hmm. and uh, give a couple of rest to uh, uh, Mohammad Rizwan maybe. So Azam Khan should be playing all five T20s in my opinion also against Ireland and England as well. If you, right. are, if you are thinking about him playing in World Cup. Mm. Uh, Asif, uh, please uh, do elaborate this argument as well. But for me, you know, as a, as a, as a skipper, my thought process would be if mm -hmm. I have a guy like Azam Khan, then instead of relying on him to finish games, I would send him in a crucial situation where, where he can just, you know, score those 30s, 40s and just give a impetus to the team even if he gets out. But as far as that finishing uh, element for Pakistan is concerned and also for the fact, I think even the best way to utilize Shadab Khan is not at number 7 as well. He's also a case which you can, <coughs> you know, uh, be brave enough to float at any number when required. Ahmed, please elaborate for us and for the viewers that uh, you require a player who has strong nerves in the crucial situation. Mm. You think that Azam is fit for that? So not at all. Well. Not for me, so no. Then well, I'll well be, I've, well. I've said it again as well. I, uh, you know, we had this whole debate about him as well and I really admire him as a player. But I think to settle into the current setup is very, very difficult. Well, thank you very much. So I think uh, everybody got the answer. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, once again, I'm, I'm coming to the Sabir Bhai's point that the, what the, what the uh, problem is mm -hmm. where Pakistan actually thinking and why. Please see the squad of New Zealand and uh, try to find where is Trent Bolt, where is uh, Tim Saudi, where is uh, Kane Williamson. They, uh, I understand they're playing IPL, but see the uh, mentality, their approach, that they're understanding this is just a bilateral series and we're just preparing ourselves for upcoming T20 World Cup. So give chances to the new players. The question is that why we are not following those traits once again, this approach that uh, give chances to the new player. Uh, Sabir, you were saying that they give five chances more to Azam Khan. Why not to the other players as, uh, okay, let's start this debate. Why not Hasibullah? Why not uh, uh, Haris, as uh, uh, mm -hmm. Ahmed was mentioning his name? Mm -hmm. uh, if you see the T20 record of the first class record, that uh, then Hasibullah is quite uh, mature. His average is above 40 in first class cricket. See the first class uh, average of Azam Khan, you will find, find him somewhere uh, under 30. So, uh, so this is the problem. When you are not giving chances, mm -hmm. this is the only point which I'll e raise even everywhere. Even you also talked about the bowling as well. And I think if we talk about the T20 current setup, we've been so obsessed with Mohammad Amir, Shaheen Afridi, Naseem Shah, Haris Rauf to an extent, that we fail to understand in the last T20 series, the most successful fast bowler for Pakistan was Abbas Afridi. We haven't even talked about him as well. And, and if you guys are talking about the, the performance of PSL, then where is Muhammad Ali? Mm -hmm. Why are you not giving him? And he has a fantastic record in uh, first class career. And then you know that the plenty of experience, you, he has bowled so many good overs in the death, uh, in, the, <coughs> in the crucial times. <coughs> He got the ability to bowl yokers, four or five yokers in an hour. And we required this kind of stuff. But of course, we are preferring Amir because he's a very strong lobby. Then we are, uh, you know, once again giving chances to Naseem Shah. He's performing so well. So I think uh, once again, we have missed the trek. We missed the chance, missed an opportunity for the youngster, for the new players to come and play us. Now, uh, nothing to discuss. Just discuss that uh, how could we win? 4-0, 5-0, because uh, they've beaten us in bilateral series 4-1 in, in uh, New Zealand. So I think we'll just go for the revenge. Absolutely. I think uh, that, <laughs> that is a very, very strong word. But I think uh, tomorrow uh, the tale would be finalized and all of us would have our answers as well. And even for you as well, I think you can uh, give us your playing 11s as well, which you think is the best. You can find us on our uh, social media platforms of Sports Extra and PTV World. Let us know uh, which playing 11 do you think is the best for uh, the Pakistan cricket team going into the T20 
uh, series tomorrow against New Zealand. Thank you very much, Sabir Hussain and Kiyase for joining us. On that note, we now shift our focus to football. The UEFA Champions League in detail, we had an intense night of football. And I think tonight it's an even more intense night as well. Uh, I have the luxury of Malik Usman who still joins me in studios. Uh, he uh, was glued to uh, the television set as well, watching the game. And I understand that there is a lot to be discussed. But first of all, initially, uh, like you mentioned as well, Usman, that uh, Barcelona really, I think, uh, gave away the game very easily. Nobody would have wanted a Champions League quarter-final second leg to go like this the way it did. I think just Barcelona just imploded and they lost it. And uh, they were dominating the game so well. They won the first leg away. And in history, they have never lost a tie in which they have won their away game. And PSG has never won a tie if they have lost at home. And the rules were reversed last night. And still, uh, Barcelona started pretty well. They scored the first goal in the 12th minute. And it just seemed that uh, it's going to be a normal course of action as they were leading by two goals in the tie. And suddenly, a brain fade from Arojo and he brought down uh, the player of uh, PSG at just outside the penalty area and it was shown straight red. And things just started to move the other way. And uh, PSG sniffed a chance and they kept on attacking, attacking, attacking. And all they wanted was a goal before the halftime, which they got from a brilliant goal from Usman Dembele. And uh, from there on, it was all PSG. And uh, I could say that uh, there was already a discussion by the commentators as well. Would you want a one-goal lead or would you want 11 players in your side against 10? And the other commentator said, I would like to have 11 uh, rather than a goal lead. Because that was how the momentum shifted towards mm. PSG. And PSG was just all out attacking, attacking. And with the prowess they have in their attacking powers, in their attacking arsenal, it was just a matter of time that they were going to level the tie. And once they leveled, it was all PSG from there on. Then they had a penalty and that was again a brain fade from the Barcelona when uh, the player had his back towards goal and he was brought down in the penalty area at the edge of the penalty area. Mbappe against goalkeeper penalty spot, you know who is going to be the winner. Mm -hmm. And from the fourth goal itself, it was a deflection which came very politely towards uh, Mbappe's left leg and he shot and it was 4-1 uh, and they simply destroyed Barcelona. I thought the game was over mm -hmm. when Xavi was shown straight red card for hitting the billboards of uh, UEFA. Mm. Well, certainly, that's a very pertinent analysis of the game. But also on the other side, the, I think Borussia Dortmund mm. had a similar fate with the dominance that they had against Atletico Madrid. I think Dortmund has really surprised everybody. Mm -hmm. We usually have a dark horse in a, every big <laughs> tournament. Dortmund has been one of them. Nobody expected them to be in the quarterfinal, let alone mm -hmm. being in the semi-finals. And once they were against Atletico Madrid after the first leg, not many would have given chance to Dortmund. Apart from having the game at home, Atletico Madrid has been good in Europe. They may not have been brilliant in uh, Spanish league, but they have been doing pretty well. And things were turning in their favour off late. And it was th as if that uh, Simeone imprinted Atletico Madrid is back. And it could pose a serious, serious challenge to Borussia Dortmund. But once Borussia Dortmund had to in a late, it seemed that the things were going to go Borussia Dortmund's way. Having a home game, having a league, a tie, uh, having a lead in the tie, uh, it was all Russia Dortmund, but this is how Champions League is all about, and this is how these knockouts are. But it became 2 2. Interestingly, you know, talk about picking one dark horse. I remember me and Ali Mehdi were talking about the fact that if there was any team you'd like to pick apart from, uh, you know, the Giants, we would have said, you know, apart, when we say Giants, we mean that apart from City or Madrid or anybody. We, we, I personally thought that. Uh, Borussia Dortmund might even make it to the finals as well. They've, they've got that They have pedigree. a serious chance. They've, they've got that mm. pedigree. And you know, they creep up and win the uh, title, you never know. But now coming to the games tonight, uh, very, very intense, oh. even on the aggregate <laughs> side of it as well. Arsenal, I think, have got a great chance over here. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the way their form has been going in the Premier League, it looks like a mental block that they need to adjust as well in their game against Bayern Munich. And then, of course, we move on to the big one, mm. City and Madrid, which has all the eyes on that game as well. At the Etihad, that is going to be the game of the <laughs> of the round itself, isn't it? Everybody is watching, everybody is glued to the new Real Madrid versus Barcelona rivalry, <laughs> isn't it? City versus Real Madrid, everybody wants to see the best team on the planet, City, and the team of Champions League, Mr. Champions League, yeah. is Real Madrid. Last time around, it was the similar tie, but it was 1-1 draw in uh, Bernabeu, but uh, City just crushed uh, Real Madrid in, at their home. This is going to be another fascinating contest. The first leg was a draw, 3-3, absolutely brilliant. But second leg, I think it is going to be even more fascinating should uh, Real have a good start. Because if uh, City scores first and City at home are a very, very tough customer to deal with. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this uh, round of game, uh, they are even going to unleash uh, Kevin De Bruyne, who, <laughs> who wasn't very well at the start of the game. So he could not feature in the game. But they had a good account of Erling Haaland. Rudiger did had his number and uh, there was nowhere, he was nowhere to be seen. I'm expecting a 
cracking contest. Mind you, City has scored three or more goals in every game this season in Champions League. They had those three in the first leg itself, but they couldn't win it. We can expect another three goals. For that thing, Real Madrid has to have their pockets filled with at least three goals in this match. Well, give us your pick <laughs> for, obviously, we've got the first semi-final lineup completed yeah. between Borussia and uh, the other teams as well. But then give us your pick when you talk about the second semi-final lineup. See, for both the games, Hearts has a different thing. <laughs> and mine has different. <laughs> I would love to see Arsenal going through, mm. but off late, the form, as you're saying, uh, has fallen at a very, very wrong time. Mm -hmm. I think this was their best chance to beat Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich in itself is fading away. Arsenal is rising. It is their moment to seize. I think they have a good chance. It's still a draw. If the scores are even. There is no away goal rule. They have a chance to win it. Hart says Bayern Munich for, simply for their pedigree. <laughs> But I think um, mind, uh, heart says Arsenal, mind says Bayern. And, and for the second leg, I think it is going to be Manchester City. Mm -hmm. They're they are too strong for Real Madrid. You could see this, see this in the first leg itself. Mm -hmm. Real had that game, uh, time. They had a lot many chances to close out the game before uh, uh, City made it 3-1. Uh, but uh, this is how it is. If you want to be a champion side, you have to seize the moment. City is the best in doing that. Being at home with the style level. Just winning the game is enough for them. I think City is going to go through. Certainly. That's a very, very interesting game that is coming up. Thank mm. you very much, Mr. Malik Usman, for joining us. All of you can obviously stay tuned to your screens as well because the fact is that we are going to have that semi-final lineup completed. And I think uh, both these English sides that are in contention, Arsenal and City, have a lot of expectations from their home fans as well. So it's going to be very, very interesting. On that note, we wrap it up. For me and the entire team, it's goodbye for now.